Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars and it's time for a Luthier's Quick Tip. If you'd like to help support this channel, visit eGuitarPlans.com and buy a plan. Now on with the video. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Luthier's Quick Tips. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about purchasing a spray gun. Now in the last episode, I talked about purchasing an air compressor. And so the gun that I'm going to be talking about for this episode is the type of gun that would work best with the compressor that I recommended last in the last episode. And just as a quick summary, uh, in the last episode I recommended that you consider a compressor that has a tank that is uh, anywhere from 10 to 30 gallons. You don't really need to go larger than that because remember, I'm talking about what you need in a small luthier workshop not in a big factory setting. And remember, we're spraying guitars. We're not spraying car bodies or large pieces of furniture or entire kitchen cabinet setups. We're just talking about guitar bodies and necks. So, and if you're only spraying like one or two guitars a week or, you know, a couple a month, you don't need to have that giant 80 gallon compressor. Something in that, that you know, 10 gallon being the absolute minimum and 30 gallon probably being more desirable but as big as you'd need to go. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the type of spray gun that I would recommend to work with that. Now there's two terms that you need to be aware of when it comes to selecting spray guns. You've got HVLP which stands for high volume low pressure and LVLP which stands for low volume low pressure. Those especially HVLP, are the most common types of spray guns in the market today. There still are a lot of general purpose guns out there, but those aren't really going to work with the type of compressor I recommended in the last episode, so you don't even need to consider those. However, when you're looking at HVLP or LVLP, it's important to be aware of the CFM requirements of the gun. How, many, how much air in cubic feet per minute does that gun consume? You'll find that a lot of HVLP guns are going to want to pull 15 CFM. And that's going to probably be way more than what your 10 to 30 gallon compressor is capable of. However, there are a lot of spray guns hitting the market these days which consume far less uh, air in terms of CFM. So what you want to look for is a gun which is designed to uh, consume no more than what your compressor is recommending, which is going to probably be in the, the you know, 6 to 8 CFM. Now, I got a 10 gallon, 2.5 horsepower uh, compressor, and my spray gun consumes 4 CFM at between 25 and 29 psi. Now, there's a growing number of guns like that out on the market, and they work fantastic with smaller compressors because they don't require a lot of PSI. You're not looking at the you know, 40 to 50 PSI, you're looking at about a little more than half that. And then the CFM drops from a CFM requirement of 15 down to four, and they still work fantastic. When I was in the market to purchase a new spray gun, I had decided, um, I wanted a gun which would do it all because in the past I was using two different kinds of spray guns. I was using an HVLP gun to spray my clear coats, but then I was using a smaller LVLP detail gun to apply dyes, paints, and stains. I wanted a gun that would do it all. And so I started doing the research and I found it was difficult to find a lot of information specific to what I needed a gun for. Most, like I said, was geared towards the automotive industry, furniture makers, and cabinet makers. Well, I happened to find a website, and I'll put a link down in the description below, for a company called Homestead Finishing. Now, Homestead Finishing is owned by a gentleman named Jeff Jewett, and some of you may be familiar with Jeff and what he does. Uh, for those of you who aren't, Jeff is probably the leading expert on woodworking uh, finishes. And he's written a number of books on the topic. He's also the guy that created trans tint dyes as well as trans fast dyes. So when you purchase trans tint, that's Jeff Jewett's product. He's also a luthier. 
he makes custom high-end uh, acoustic guitars. And if you visit his website, homesteadfinishing.com, you'll notice he also sells a line of spray guns. So in doing my research, I had narrowed it down to three or four spray guns before I found Jeff's website at Homestead Finishing. And what I was struck by was the fact that he has a whole bunch of different spray guns that he sells. And these are all sold under the brand Qualspray. And that's, it's a business that, or a brand that I think Jeff created. And these are all guns that are manufactured in Taiwan, but they're all made to Jeff's specification. And he actually recommends specific uses for all of his different spray guns. And there was one in particular that he recommends specifically for luthiers. And that is the, it's the Qual Spray QS125WB. And that's the gun that I'm using. And I use this for everything from spraying really small, soft edge burst effects to wide fan clear coat applications. And it does it all. Uh, it came with three different tips ranging from 0.8 millimeter, uh, uh, then there's I think a 1.2 millimeter, and then a 1.5 millimeter. So you've got enough needles to cover pretty much any finishing situation that you would encounter spraying guitars. Now it has just a very small cup on the top. Uh, you can replace this not only with a larger cup, but you can also use the 3M PPG system. So it's really a pretty capable gun, but what really caught my attention initially was the fact that it only draws 4 CFM at between 25 and 29 PSI, which is well within my little 10 gallon, two and a half horsepower compressor, and it works great. The other thing I really like about this gun is it's specifically designed to handle water-based finishes, and that's critically important when you're selecting a gun if you plan to use water-based finishes. The gun has to be designed and made to spray water-based finishes. A lot of guns out there aren't. You may notice that some guns will uh, advertise the fact that they have a stainless steel needle and a stainless steel nozzle. That's good, but it's not good enough. You need to have the entire passageway from the cup all the way down through the gun lined with stainless steel to prevent corrosion. You also need to have really good seals to prevent fluid from backing up into the rest of the gun and causing corrosion problems with the other components. This gun was designed specifically for spraying water-based finishes, and it does a fantastic job. Now, I know I'm sounding like a commercial here for the Qual Spray QS125 WB, and I'm not because Jeff isn't paying me to talk about this gun. He didn't give me this gun. I bought this with my own money. What I'm trying to do is share with you the specs that I, that I have for this gun. And then you can use that to shop for whatever gun you want to use and use that as a basis. So that's kind of um, the reason why I'm talking about this gun so much. So, you know, you don't have to buy this one. You know, I will say it's not a cheap gun. It's it's going to be for, on the higher price range, but it has all the features that you're going to want to find in a gun. It's very high quality, but I would use that as a benchmark to gauge all other spray guns that you might be considering. So hopefully that this has been um, a good experience as far as learning what you need to consider for a spray gun and a compressor. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, post them down below. I'll try to answer them. And be sure to hit that subscribe button. I'll post links to the spray gun down below. And I'll see you in the next episode. So take care, stay safe, and we'll see you soon.